Hello everyone, welcome to the HR Innovation and Future and Future of Work Global Online Conference. Uh, thank you very much for joining us um, in this uh, one of these global panels. This is about the experience of work in Latin America. And today we're going to talk and discuss um, a lot of issues and ideas around employee experience and how Latin American companies or other um, companies from the rest of the world are coping with change in the region regarding our history, culture, um, and the talent we have here in Latin America. It is a pleasure um, for me to share this panel with these three um, great um, HR leaders. Um, they are from three different countries of South America. One is uh, Susana is from Argentina, Denise is from Chile, and, and Danielle is from Brazil. Uh, but they are um, from South America, but they have a lot of experience working in the rest of Latin America. Um, so it'll be very exciting uh, for all of us here to, to share some ideas with them too. So I welcome you to share your, your thoughts and knowledge. I'm gonna give you some, um, a little bit of background of the region, especially for those who are not uh, from Latin America. And, and then we're gonna discuss a little bit more and, and I'll, I have prepared some questions for the three ladies here with me. Uh, but if you have questions, please let us know and, and we'll be um, exchanging those questions with these uh, three HR um, professionals. So first of all, Susana Rodriguez um, is here with us. She's a consultant with more than 30 years of experience. Um, she is currently working for KPMG in Latin America in the people and change uh, practice. She leads that practice for KPMG, but she has a lot of experience working in different uh, topics such as um, transformation, operational organization and, technolo and technological changes. Uh, with a focus on, on change management and people. So she has a lot of um, things to share with us regarding um, uh, how we adapt to these changes uh, regarding technology and, and the future of work and the future of organizations. Um, and she also is a mother of two millennials, so that will be very interesting for us to share <laughs> those insights <laughs> from her. Um, also, um, Denise uh, is here with us. She's um, um, uh, working in at Puratos. Uh, I'm sorry, Danielle is working at Puratos. Uh, she's the HR vice president at, at this Belgium company, and she's uh, leading um, this uh, group of HR in South America and Central America, covering 16 countries. So she, I'm sure she has a lot of things to say also. Um, she's been working uh, in the HR field for the last 20 years. So um, she's a very um, experienced and, and seasoned professional too. Um, lastly, uh, but not, uh, last but not least, uh, um, Denise Golfer from Chile. She is a um, um, chief people officer of Walmart Chile. Um, and, and she is managing the amazing amount of 50,000 people <laughs> in, in her company. Um, before working for Walmart, she's been, um, she had um, another HR roles um, regarding uh, digital and cultural transformation and DNI, which is diversity. And that's very interesting too, because she can um, share with us uh, a lot of knowledge regarding diversity, especially in this region, which is, uh, seems to be um, pretty similar to other regions, but it has a lot of um, specific features and history, which makes us, as we like to say, specials. Um, but for those who are not from, from the region, and maybe they have some knowledge about Latin America. It's, it is, um, I mean, to sum up, it's a very complex uh, region, maybe like some others, but not as stable as other ones in the, in the world. Um, we like to divide this Latin American region in three different um, sub-regions. One is North America, which is basically Mexico. The other one is Central America and the Caribbean which is where the most countries are. 
uh, we have so many islands and so many small countries there. Um, so that's maybe one of the uh, most complex areas or sub-regions in Latin America. And South America in terms of diversity and complexity. Um, but South America is it's, uh, the last one and you may or companies may or, not, may or may not include Brazil because of um, difference of languages. Um, but South America is um, it's a very large one. Um, take into account that um, most of our ancestors are, um, came from Europe. So uh, there's a mix of different cultures, um, which is very interesting. Uh, we have uh, people that came from Europe and, other, and in, in other times of, um, in another years, we received people from Asia and, and, and even North America. And that makes us uh, a very um, uh, diverse um, region in the world. Um, the most, um, the main spoken languages are Spanish and Portuguese, and the whole population is around 650 million people, which half of that, a little bit more, 50.8% are women. And, and this is a region which um, has a lot of potential, uh, but for some reason, and I'm coming from Argentina, and I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself, um, I come from Argentina, I'm Manuel Arias. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Um, but in Argentina, we are used to this um, um, sudden changes every five or six years. And, and so we are dealing with change all the time. Um, I work in, um, in, in my consulting firm, which is Savvy HR Consulting, and we deal with change all the time. We work with clients in, in different countries in the region, especially in South America. And the main issues are um, basically change, how to adapt to economic crisis or social inst and instability or uh, political changes and sudden political changes in, different, in, um, in our countries. And, and I think our leaders, um, especially those who deal uh, with the business, are very well prepared to cope with change. Um, <clears throat> some HR leaders are better prepared to that, and we are going to discuss a little bit more later on. Um, let me give you some, a little bit more data um, about um, the region. The economy, I mean, regarding the economy, um, <clears throat> the biggest countries are Brazil, Mexico, and Chile, and Colombia, and Argentina. Um, Argentina uh, used to be one of the biggest, but lately uh, Brazil in the last decades, in the last few decades, Brazil and Mexico um, um, increased their GDP and economy a little bit, a, a lot. And that um, makes us uh, very, um, a, 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 a region with a lot of potential, especially for those companies coming from, from Mexico and Brazil. Chile has a very stable economy although have um, some political problems uh, lately. Uh, they, they've been suffering some um, political and social uh, issues there in Chile, but the economy is one of the most, most stable in the region, and maybe the most stable in the region. One interesting data that, one of, um, uh, that, that we gathered before, prior to this panel is that the most innovative countries are not the biggest, Chile, Costa Rica, uh, are the top two uh, most innovative uh, countries, and Mexico is in the third place, which is very interesting because it's not only about size, it's also about um, how that culture uh, contribute to the innovation and, and the future of organizations there. <clears throat> Another thing that is interesting that we have um, some big, big companies um, most of them are coming from Mexico and some others from Brazil. Uh, there are a few coming from Argentina and others from Colombia, uh, but basically the biggest companies are Mexican and Brazilian companies, uh, such as Cemex, Grupo Bimbo, Grupo Alpha, America Mobile, which is Claro in the region, uh, Valet Mining Company, Latam Airlines from Chile, and also Tenaris and Arcos Dorados, which is a, a franchiser for McDonald's. In, in, I think it's the biggest franchise franchiser in the world, and it's, it's it's a mixture between Colombia and Argentina. 
Uh, but also, um, the one interesting feature is that 15% uh, of all unicorns in the world are coming from Latin America. Remember those unicorns, and, and Susana will talk of, about that uh, later on. Um, are those companies are startups that value more than one billion dollars, uh, and they are uh, both. Uh, they you could consider them both local and global at the same time. Best examples in the region: Mercado Libre, um, Globan, Despegar, um, also Nubank uh, from Brazil, Gimpass from Brazil too. Softec from Mexico, Crystal Lagoons from Chile, Rappi from Colombia, and, and we'll uh, give some space to Susana to talk about more about that, unless you want to add some ideas now, Susana. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Manuel. Uh, I would like to speak about unicorns in the region because I think that there are a lot of uh, companies of a startup with a great uh, um, volume of transactions and growth. And in the case of Argentina, we are very proud that um, we develop uh, five unicorns and uh, one of them, uh, okay, I, I, I work with them with two of uh, unicorns in Argentina and in the region and I have the opportunity to know um, other culture um, other way to work and really it's uh, very interesting to know how these young companies are um, growing and uh, with a special uh, or a particular talent and also with um, a particular culture. I saw that, I see in this uh, type of companies that they are like all the startups, um, digital native. They have a great um, commitment to people and also a constant innovation. They are innovating all the time and um, really uh, they um, are moving in the market and in the region. The, the market is the, is the world. The, the, the unicorns are uh, or have two citizenship. They are local, Mercado Libre is Argentina, but it's also global. And the same with Despegar and the same with uh, Rappi or Globo in Spain. Globo um, is for Spain, for Barcelona, but when you uh, travel by America or Europe, you uh, see Globo everywhere. The same Rappi from Colombia, here in Argentina and in other countries, that really I surprised a lot to see how these uh, young companies uh, are growing in, in a short time. That's the reason why I uh, love this type of culture and this uh, way of work and um, also the, the big um, work that all the work teams are uh, doing in this type of companies. Then when I compare uh, these co young companies with the traditional companies and also with public sector, I uh, can see that uh, we, we can uh, migrate some um, pros process and, and some uh, ways of work to other companies, not in a, a very easy way, but it's, uh, it's possible to, to imitate um, this new way of work that for me it's uh, it's fantastic. But, Great. Okay, but yeah, as, yeah. Uh, Go on, please. Uh, as Manuel said, also in the region we have uh, a lot of uh, big companies called multilatinas. Uh, the multilatinas uh, in the region are very important, especially in Brazil. Petrobras uh, is one of them. 
Eh, what, uh, we also in Mexico, FEMSA is another multilatina. And um, in Chile, well, Denise, um, Denise uh, perhaps can add some more information, but COPEC and CENCOSUD are another multilatinas, very important in the region, and with uh, a particular um, uh, culture of work. Um, okay. Uh, I, uh, yes. Susana, um, let me give you um, some other thoughts. That when I, when, when I was preparing this um, speech or, or these slides, um, I was thinking about the advantages that we have that we have as a region. And one of the advantages is that there's a, uh, there are a lot of um, commodities in the in the region that are very important for the world not only oil and gas like in Venezuela or Mexico or but copper gold and and silver in Chile for example or Peru or, or other minerals in 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 the Andean Andean region but also some others like soy corn and other like um, uh, crops that are very important for China for example so I think this is a, a region that has a lot of natural resources and natural advantages because of the climate and, and the people know how to deal with the climate and how to take advantage from the climate, taking, um, developing uh, those commodities in, in the region. Um, so, but also I see that people are very prepared, are, are well prepared to, to work in companies with a good level of education and, and even multinational companies that are not from Latin America can work uh, easily in, in the region because of uh, that level of education, they can find easily uh, find talent, for example, for software companies. Or remember, we have an office of Facebook in Argentina, or there are a lot of mining companies from other regions of the world working in Chile. And, and oil and gas companies all around the, the, the region, and they hire people from, from Latin America. They ha we have engineers, we have a lot of um, specific talent for those industries. And more and more software engineers and, and developers uh, became more important in the region and, and working from the region to the world. So I will ask Denise, uh, to give some insight uh, regarding this um, characteristic of, of the talent pool in, 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 in Latin America. Why is it so interesting for big companies like yours, like Walmart, um, to develop uh, people from this region to work in another region afterwards? So what is the potential that we have? for this invitation. It's great to be here uh, talking about uh, employee experience and uh, our talent here in, in Latin America. Um, well, uh, I think that uh, regarding talent, uh, we should talk also about the challenges on uh, how we're facing digital transformation. Uh, we're living in this, um, in the fourth industrial revolution and really, uh, I believe that the main challenge in all the industries is how we really face and how uh, we can be a change agent about um, getting our talent to the next step. Um, on this side, um, we have a lot of uh, very uh, highlighted companies uh, that are adopting new tools, new technologies, and Really, they are they are facing uh, these new challenges, uh, giving talent uh, new new capabilities to go onto a global uh, onto a global context. Uh, but there's so much to, to do still. Um, on the on the employee experience side, um, here we combine three different topics. So first, uh, we combine culture, how we are delivering our organizational culture. Then the workspace, um, how are uh, our buildings, our dynamic inside the teams. And there's also about technology, what we are doing here. 
And uh, really, uh, one of the um, of the of the challenges that we have is how uh, we face this digital transformation. Not getting the focus on technology, but really getting the focus on people. How we help people about how they face these exponential changes, how they adapt to new conditions, and how um, people can leverage on new tools to expand their capabilities and really uh, get into a lifelong learning suite. I think that that's what uh, companies here in Latin America are, are starting to, um, to move on. Uh, how we really adopt this new context, how we really have to move on. And also, at the same time, we have some very uh, specific um, challenges regarding our demographic uh, conditions. Um, talking about Chile, we have a, a very strong talent uh, about getting women into labor. Um, we have one of the lowest um, rates of women in labor we have below 50%, we have nearly 48, 49%. And that's also about uh, how we're moving into uh, a more modern concept of women, not only uh, being at home or getting, uh, getting care of um, the kids or getting care of the, of the big people, but how they can move into this new role. So that's still a challenge here. Uh, we have made some advances, but there's still a ta uh, uh, challenge. And also aging. Aging, uh, usually when you think about Latin America, you're going to think about young people, um, uh, uh, but, but really the rates of how people is aging here, it's really um, a, a, a very special phenomenon. I have um, some rates about Chile. Uh, in 20 more years, we're going to have 33% of adults of 60, 65 years or more. And wow. we're going to be one of the top 30 countries uh, with older people. So we have to move as a country that we are usually to uh, have a lot of uh, people uh, available for work how we're going to move on to this new logic about um, having a lot of people that's going to be older, how we can open new possibilities also for work for these people because um, the, 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 the current model, it's not going to be um, enough to cover uh, 30 years of uh, exactly. retirement. So we're facing also this challenge. So digital transformation and how we adapt to this continuous change but also demographic changes uh, on the other side. Daniel, can you tell us what do you think about that? Like um, those um, challenges that are facing in Chile, for example, do you think it's the same challenge that other countries in the regions are facing? Like um, this um, population becoming older uh, in the following years? And, and less women or, or, or the, the challenge to include more, more women in the, in the labor market. So what do you think is happening in other countries like Brazil or other uh, countries that you are in charge of? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, well, I do agree with Denise. I think that we have an interesting panorama, if I can say so, in our region. Currently, like you said in the beginning, I cover 16 countries from Central America until uh, Argentina, <laughs> where you are based. So it's very interesting to see that we do have some interesting differences, but a lot of similarities. So uh, including, uh, we were discussing before this session about some interesting data. So we do have now this uh, challenge of dealing with multi-generations -ger in the same workspace. And I believe that we still lag behind. We are not yet there, ready to face those challenges. Uh, but I see many companies already trying to do some efforts towards that, things like reverse mentoring practices, where the people who are more experienced, they really try to gather insights from the new generations that are coming with different mindsets, people who are much more fo focused, for instance, in purpose, not necessarily staying for such long tenures like in, in the past, 
within the companies at the same time looking for ways to make a difference to do something greater than just you know contributing for the success in terms of numbers to companies so uh, for instance when i see attraction drivers there is something very interesting for us to think what really motivates people from our region to work on companies i got in contact with some very interesting data and uh, i was comparing somehow what are the top three drivers for uh, the so-called EVP, the employee value proposition mm -hmm. in our region compared with the rest of the world. And I came up uh, with an interesting uh, data in which it says that when you put uh, the first place of the ranking, they are similar when you compare our region, Latin America with the worldwide, which is compensation. But from my, from my experience dealing with those 16 countries, what I see is not that people are crazy about you know earning lots of money but it's more feeling that they are uh, fair fairly mm -hmm. receiving what they would uh, would uh, get out of their work so i feel mm -hmm. compensated i feel well valued so that's the experience that i see from uh, um, my company and the other companies that i worked in the second one is uh, respect for Latin America, whereas in the rest of the world is work-life balance. And work-life balance does not appear yet as an attraction driver, driver on the top three, I mean, in our region. And I was thinking about it, what, what is it in this data? So I think that uh, respect, respect when I uh, correlate with the culture that I'm living uh, currently in the food company that I am now, people really feel like uh, being part of uh, something greater. They feel like, okay, I want to feel respected, valued, part of a family, so as to speak, a group of people that I care about working for and work-life balance. Not that it, people are not looking for it, especially the younger generations, but it's not yet something that many companies are strong at in our region compared, for instance, with North America or Europe, where we have more, more mature cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, so just do, to give you do some you see differences um, among those countries? For example, in Brazil is one thing, or maybe, I don't know, um, Guatemala or Puerto Rico, like very uh, smaller countries than Brazil. Are, are so much different or um, you can say that it's almost more or less the same I mean in mm. terms of motivation and, and yeah, how you deal it, with those employees uh -huh. well I think uh, it depends on the perspective that we are taking so uh, when I compare for instance Brazil that it's a continental country where I am from where I am based but comparing with other countries that I work with very closely I see for instance that in Brazil um, people are uh, maybe more uh, volatile mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, career perspective. People are changing more jobs compared to other Latin America countries. I see that the workforce is a little bit more stable in the other mm -hmm. countries of the region compared with Brazil, in which we have a more competitive landscape for talents. Uh, we do have many multinational companies, especially here in Sao Paulo, where I am based. So the competition for talent is very fierce here. Uh, whereas in the other countries of the region, I think it's heating up, but it's not yet at the same level as it is here in Brazil. Susana. So this makes things a little bit different in terms of drivers of attraction, in my opinion. Yeah, great. But I want to compare what Susana think about that, um, thinks about it, about that, um, regarding um, her experience working with Mercado Libre, which is in, I think, in 20 countries. Or So, Susana, do you know, um, do you agree with, with uh, Danielle, or do you have a different experience? Because I, I'm thinking about Mercado Libre, which is a technological company, um, which is hiring those um, uh, software engineers, developers, uh, which are very, um, uh, I mean, a lot of companies are, are looking for them. And, and, and Mercado Libre has to do a, a good job um, um, attracting them, but also to keep them happy. So that's when we talk about employee experience, one of the, um, the main uh, 
I think future is to to listen, to listen to those employees and to see that diversity and to understand what they want. So Susana, can you give us um, more details about what Mercado Libre um, do in the region or other companies maybe that um, are in different countries like Mercado Libre? Yes, I, I, can, I can say uh, that a lot of companies are doing big investment in, in people and in young people and especially um, regarding to programming and new technologies. Um, universities also, not only in Argentina, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Chile, uh, places, countries where um, are um, very, very um, uh, universities with uh, um, a great, uh, great recognition, international recognition, um, in, in best position in a, in a um, global ranking. And if uh, universities give the opportunity to students with becas and special programs to study new technologies and also programming and so on. Also, the companies, not only the unicorns that need uh, um, technological resources, all the companies are doing a great, a great investment uh, preparing young people and people in general um, to uh, work in, with technology. For example, mm -hmm. in KPNG, we have a digit, digital programs for, for, for public, for young students, and in a lot of companies too. And also, uh, in Gobierno de la Ciudad de Buenos Aires, there are a lot of free programs, free, uh, free trainings for people to uh, learn about new technologies and, progr and programming. Obviously, the, um, the, um, the resources, technology resources is, is a, it's a, it's a, yeah. okay, it's a great problem in, in all the markets, but in this type of uh, companies, uh, there are not fronters, then there are um, internal rotation, okay? And also uh, the recruitment is uh, in, all the re in, in all the countries, in all the region, in all the world. Uh, for example, uh, in Argentina, also in, uh, in public sector, we have uh, working with uh, people from Venezuela, from Brazil, uh, and also uh, uh, from Chile, Mexico. Uh, in public sector, in private sector, there are a, a lot of people from different countries because when we have uh, to work with uh, talent acquisition, talent acquisition also uh, didn't have frontiers. Okay, they um, need a people and people uh, work uh, from, from different countries um, and they can travel and can um, come to Buenos Aires or another country for a job, then I think that is a, a great, great opportunity for people to work in, in Latin America in Argentina, obviously, they mm -hmm. have to analyze a lot of items. Exactly. I, I have then a formula to uh, help people to choose the best location to work. Um, this, this is very interesting. One is that um, Latin America can have a global pool uh, to um, supply um, global companies like uh, Walmart, for example, which is, I think it's one of the biggest. It's, if it's not the, the biggest one, it's, it's the second one uh, in terms of size and number of employees all around the world. Uh, but also, um, it's interesting how governments are um, helping companies. I mean, some governments more than others, but most of them are trying to help companies to prepare the people in terms of uh, public education or um, public trainings or whatever programs they have to help companies to find uh, those em uh, right employees uh, faster. 
And I was, um, um, I would like to ask Denise, uh, what is the main challenge regarding digital transformation um, and employee experience in the region? Like, um, what do you think companies um, uh, must do in the following years to adapt to this um, uh, for uh, industrial revolution, Denise? Uh, well, answering to your question about uh, the amount of people, uh, Walmart is the biggest uh, private employer in the world. I know. Uh, it's yeah. number, <laughs> number one in Mexico until we were the third one. Uh, <laughs> but again, we, we have a great responsibility um, uh, hiring a lot of people uh, and different profiles also. Um, we are really transforming uh, a brick and mortar uh, business into a digital business uh, and how we're going to transform to really serve into uh, omni omnichannel uh, solution for our, our customers. And uh, from our um, original mission was to um, save, ma sa save our customers money to, to live better. And now our mission is uh, how uh, we save we save uh, money to our customers, and how we can help them to live a better life, and to live a better life is also about saving time. So this really requires a big transformation about the mindset, about how we work, how we really um, get used to or uh, use different channels to serve our customers, to really understand the customer needs, and really to uh, to serve. Um, in the way they need they, these different um, families. We are, we are now very focused uh, on the busy families uh, target and how we can help them with uh, a, a lot of uh, products. And regarding our internal challenges, uh, Manuel, um, we're applying the 70 20 10 um, model about learning. And uh, this, um, this understand that. Um, Really, in the traditional way, we used to think about uh, education and classes, about the only way of how we learn. Uh, but re this really, it's only 10% of how we learn this, this wow. formal education. And we're going into a focus about how we learn on the job. So this about experience, this is a 70% about how we, we will learn. And we're also having a big focus on exposure. That's the 20% 20, 20 about how we learn and how, how we relate with other people, how we learn through mentoring, through a shadowing. So we are enhancing that kind of, um, of do you think, opportunity. Do you think that um, strategy um, help employees to feel better in terms of um, recognition, but also how they learn or how they um, develop their career uh, in, in, in the company? Yeah, this, 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 uh, it's uh, really a lot of, um, of, of relation with the employee experience. Um, about to really to, to develop in your career, you need to connect with other people. You need to learn and also you need how to, to really have an effective relation with others. So um, on this uh, on this side, we also uh, have different tools about how we help people to connect with each other and how to share information. We have um, one year ago um, we um, we deployed a workplace a workplace from from Facebook, and uh, this is really have been amazing. You know, this is uh, an app that you use here on your phone, this is like your, your Facebook, but uh, corporate Facebook. And all the people, the 50,000 employees, they are connected uh, every day. Wow. People in our nearly 400 stores, they can share about recognition, celebrations, also uh, 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 about what uh, problems they have. So really we're connecting all the company, uh, all the company in, uh, in a very informal way. And that was a global um, policy from Walmart um, in, um, globally. I mean, they implemented that globally. Was it difficult to do that um, in, in, in Latin America? Or, I mean, there was a resistance to that, or uh, at the beginning there was difficult to implement, or people were very um, 
use, um, I mean, welcoming those um, new tools to interact and communicate with others. Well, this is a global initiative. Uh, and we have several groups uh, within uh, Workplace. So you can connect with the uh, international team. Uh, you have different topics about uh, how we can learn or how we can share all, also some news. Uh, and in Chile, you know that even we have a lot of different profiles. We have people from the stores, from the home office. The people from the stores, they are reusing it daily. So it's really amazing about how they share about all the advances they have, the recognitions about what's happening. So all the company is connected uh, in, in, inside Chile and also with the rest of the world. Wow. And Daniel, do you think the role of HR should be changing in, in, in the following years to adapt to these new strategies uh, regarding the employee experience? I mean, how can they do that? Um, or at least, how do you plan to do that in the following years in Puratos, at Puratos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think this is a very relevant uh, topic, including because I believe that taking care of the employee experience is the new way of uh, taking care of your engagement service because uh, culture is what happens in the day-to-day. -day. It's not a picture that you take once every two years. In the between, there are so many things that happen. So taking care of the daily experiences, how you hire, how you terminate, how you promote, what you communicate, this is really something that will never leave the agenda of HR, really making sure that people have the best experience on the tenure that they think it's worth for both sides. Uh, on the other hand, when we think about the disrupting trends, uh, I believe that we do require some interesting transformation in the HR function, like understanding uh, the new business models that are uh, appearing. We know that nowadays, talking about the unicorns in the beginning, uh, many people have this willingness to open their own businesses, uh, the technology plays a very interesting and key role, automation, uh, gamification. So there are so many new trends that we as an HR function, we really need to surf that wave to anticipate and to help the company to really be ready for those new challenges. Uh, so understanding the customer expectation shifts uh, going really uh, on the edge of the trends to help our people because in the end people are the ones that make everything happen right so we as a, we as hr have this mission and we need to be really connected to what's happening out there understanding the advancements of the technology the competition for new skills and like you said in the beginning many companies really need to invest in building those skills because they are not available on the marketplace so if we really are able to anticipate, to understand those trends, I think that we can make a huge difference as an HR function. At the same time, working in Latin America, you cannot ignore that you are always uh, dealing with political risks. So how do you stay on the top of the edge in terms of understanding the future? And on the other hand, dealing with the uncertainty of developing economies, no? We were mentioning about Chile that faced those big movements in the last year that were really kind of a surprise to the uh, most people. So this is the ambiguity I believe that we have to deal with as an HR function in Latin America. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I was thinking when you, when you were um, telling us these ideas uh, that at least in Argentina, um, Four years, we are going to, to the left, and the other four years, we are going to the right, and then to the center. So we are going back and forth all the time, uh, which is very difficult to um, develop a business in, in sometimes. But yeah. on the other hand, um, we have professionals that are very well prepared to, to deal with that um, sudden changes. Um, so my question to Susanna now is, do you think um, HR teams in big companies are um, very different from those from unicorns and uh, from the region? I mean, like uh, someone from Cemex or uh, Tenaris, are, um, those teams, those HR teams, 
are different or the strategy is very different from um, the ones from uh, like um, Mercado Libre, Globans, or Rappi, or those other unicorns? Do you think the, the, the strategy is different or they are, are pretty much the same? Uh, the gap is, uh, is not uh, high uh, because I think that um, there is a, a global business culture and a global work culture and the gap um, every day is, uh, is less. Why? Well, because all the people, all the people in, in HR and in all the areas, in all kind of companies are working with the new trends. I uh, have experience with unicorns, with uh, corporations, with small business, and also con public sector. And I uh, see the same, okay, because uh, young people and the technology push us to the change. There okay. is no alternative. We have to change or change, <laughs> okay? Yeah, uh, so I think that's very a uh, very interesting point because um, maybe in the past um, business leaders were um, showing us uh, the path uh, to the future. Now those business leaders not only are part of the, the new generations, like in many unicorn companies, but also um, they have to listen and to really um, uh, hear the, those voices from young people and from young generations, because they, they are showing us um, um, what they like, but companies need them to develop those uh, businesses uh, in the best possible way. Um, I have a, a, um, another question. Um, this is to all of them, and, and regarding the, that we are um, arriving to the end of this uh, hour that we have. Um, what do you think would be the best uh, one piece of advice you would give to any HR professional already working in Latin America or someone who wants to work in Latin America? I mean, not only for, for us uh, living and working in Latin America, but maybe um, someone in other regions um, already, um, currently uh, watching us and now. Um, so what would be that uh, piece of advice for them regarding this um, characteristic that we discussed? Oh, okay. Um, in... In KPNG, we have a, a type of services related with uh, location analysis. Sometimes company ask us, um, they want to uh, implement a new office or a new business or a share services in Latin America or in another place. And we have to, uh, to do the analysis of the different locations and we uh, define a scorecard. All the items that we analyze are the same, the same that a professional that want to change <laughs> uh, must do. For example, related with labor or work phase, um, the, the quality, the, the market, the tax cost, the living cost, the infrastructure, the, okay, uh, I know uh, practically all the continent, then I, I can say that we compete a lot with, uh, with all the countries and each country have a, par a particular um, star, a particular uh, benefit and sometimes, uh, okay, for example, um, in Argentina, if uh, people are analyzing between Argentina and other, and other countries are, and have to compare inflation rate, Argentina, mm, okay, because we are working with uh, the inflation problem in, in, in our country. But in Argentina, there are a lot of new companies, are, are companies working a lot and exporting, and there are a lot of opportunities for a lot of people. And 
what people uh, analyze um, to work in Argentina is, um, okay, depends on if it is a millennial or if it is um, a couple with uh, children. And uh, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Mexico, Colombia have good universities to study for children and for young people and all the people who uh, work here in, in, the, in Latin America. And also in all the countries are special landscapes. And if you, um, I, there are a lot of people who prefer Brazil for obviously uh, the landscape of Brazil and other people, Argentina, other Chile because they are very, very near Cordillera de los Andes, and other people, Peru, uh, other people, Mexico, but um, political questions and economic uh, issues uh, and also security, criminal statistics is another item that people analyze. It's terrible, but it's true. People also uh, analyze how to live in different countries about security and also about uh, poverty, okay? Population above uh, the po poverty line. Then, um, okay, um, People have to analyze uh, priorities also, um, but um, I think that companies uh, have a, a proper culture and sometimes people uh, follow a company, okay? Uh -huh. And a corporate or a multilatina or a unicorn with different places to work and the possibility to uh, do a rotation, it's, uh, it's good for a lot of people. Okay. Denise, um, what would be your piece of advice to anyone um, who works in, in, in Latin America or who wants to work in Latin America? I mean, what should be um, looking at or be prepared um, to deal with? You are you mute, uh, Denise. Yeah, yeah. I, Hi, yeah. There. Sorry. Thank you. Um, really, Latin America, it's a land of opportunities. And um, uh, for people that want to um, grow on the entrepreneurship uh, side, they have a lot of opportunities. People that also want to have a different experience uh, at work in different industries, they also have a lot. Um, we have some very specific industries, you know, here in Chile. Uh, we have one of the cleanest skies of the world. And if you like uh, 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 astronomy and you like to see the stars, we have here the best scientists in the world and the best data scientists regarding all this data about the space. So we have really a very, very um, wide variety of, um, of industries, uh, of people, uh, a lot of immigrants. So you're go going to find uh, diversity here. And, um, and there's a lot to still to do uh, about how to, to you can uh, support with different perspectives or, 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 or of getting um, new ideas and how to, to move on. But uh, there's uh, still a lot to do. Uh, it's, we have amazing, uh, amazing countries, amazing landscapes, amazing people also. So. Uh, for sure, if, if you are from other country, you here can find friends uh, and really uh, a lot to do here. So not only maybe from a work site, but also about uh, how to go in and get uh, to know new people, new life, social life, adventures. So a lot to do here. Danielle. Yeah, well, um, I will not repeat what my colleague said, but uh, from my perspective, what I would like to maybe uh, emphasize is that it is a place in which you have so much diversity of cultures. At the same time, you have the privilege of uh, having only two main languages that are spoken in so many countries. So I think this is a beauty from uh, our region. 
And the other thing that I would like to also highlight is the warm culture. I think this is really an advantage that we have. Uh, it's a place uh, full of passion. People are, really do value trust and building bonds. And I think this is very unique about our culture and very special. At the same time, if you want to work in a region uh, in which you have so many opportunities to leave your mark, because at the same time, we still lack in so many areas like infrastructure, uh, you still have some degree of uncertainty. So you can really contribute not only to your company, but also to the society. And I think this is really something that we should give value to. So though, this would be my highlights. Perfect. Um, I will wrap up a little bit some ideas that we discussed uh, during this hour. Um, one of the main features I found, and, and after discussing with you guys, I, I just um, confirmed that this is a very exciting region in the world. There's a lot of things to do and a lot of businesses to do. And I think we have a lot of room to keep working on, on employee experience and improving on improving employee experience in, in our companies and those companies um, uh, working in, in the region. Um, we have a lot of different companies with different cultures. Um, the region is basically multicultural, a multicultural region. And, and one of the biggest advantages is um, we have so many people that can speak English, which is an advantage to make businesses, especially those who are well-educated. And we have good, uh, very good uh, universities, especially in the biggest countries. And some of them are very cheap and for free. So that's one of the reasons we have um, a good talent of people, um, a, a group of, of, of talented people in the region. And, and I think companies can see that. And the main uh, challenge is to deal with change, to deal with political instability and, and economic uh, crisis every now and then. Uh, but basically, uh, it's a very friendly culture and, and they're very open to to work with uh, other people from other regions. So I think this is a very nice country. I, but on the other hand, I have three minutes. Um, this is, um, um, we have a big, big opportunity to improve um, that uh, employee experience from our companies and also to prepare our HR, HR teams to deal with um, changes in technology and incorporate um, AI, people analytics, and other uh, tools that technology and people, uh, um, employees from other backgrounds like data science or um, uh, even uh, statistics people and those um, guys who can crunch uh, in a better way those numbers uh, will be um, will help a lot to those companies working in the region. I mean, um, if you want to improve your employee experience, you need to work with data. And data, uh, if you want to work with data, you need to um, include uh, people in your teams. And, and those people in your team will interact with different um, backgrounds and, and, and cultures. And the best will be to exchange a point of view uh, from those um, diverse teams. So I think um, we have um, a lot of things to do. Um, I don't know if we have questions from the audience, uh, but maybe we don't have so much time. Mm -hmm. So I give you 30 seconds to each of, uh, of you ladies, uh, if you want to say something, and I will uh, use the last 30 seconds to say goodbye. So anything you want to say in 15 seconds? I would just okay. like to say thank you. Oh, sorry, Susanna. And uh, no, no. anyone who is interested in connecting on LinkedIn and, you know, touching base on any kind of uh, topics that we discussed, uh, feel free to reach me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. You're going to say? Yeah, okay. Thank you. And um, I will share with the audience and with you, obviously, a, a video about uh, the HR team of the future and also 
Yeah, two surveys that one of them is for our team of mobility with the best practices and policies regarding to assignment in, in global assignment, obviously including Latin America, Perfect. to uh, compare the benefits of each uh, country. And also another survey about the future of work. And okay, thanks for the time. It was a pleasure. Um, Denise, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, really, uh, it was a great experience connecting uh, with uh, all the this audience, international audience, and happy to stay in touch, uh, whatever whatever you need from me. So you can follow me in, in LinkedIn and, and, and get get in contact. Well, we don't.